Hi everyone, it's your favourite bearded content creator, Anthony Zanet. This is my studio, I know it's not the most professional, but I hope I'm going to provide you some tips which may be helpful. Today I'm going to talk about how to prepare to photograph an event, such as a birthday or an engagement or anything in general. The idea for this video came about as I was recently asked by my cousin to photograph her 15th birthday, also known as a quinceanera. Now this is a very important birthday within the South American community. I hope I pronounced it right. So I would like to publicly thank my legendary cousin for giving me this opportunity. Before we get right into it, please like, comment and subscribe, which will help with the mysterious YouTube algorithm. And hopefully it will push this video to the people who will actually find this information very useful. Click the big red button right here. Hopefully I'm pointing to the right spot. Having a discussion with the client is a very important step in preparing to photograph an event. Firstly, it helps build rapport with your client. You should discuss with the client the details of the event. Take note of the key parts so that you can think about it beforehand on how you will execute these key parts so that you can capture the moments and deliver it to the client. Also, discuss with your client what are the key requirements that they want for you to capture in this event so that you can hit those targets on the day of the event. For example, at this cousin's birthday, one of the key moments that they wanted captured was when the father fitted the shoes on his daughter. By having this discussion with the client, you know what their expectations are. But remember, as a photographer, your overall aim is to secure clients and have return clients as well. Therefore, aim to over deliver. This is a big opportunity for you to be able to gain more clients through positive referrals from the jobs that you have just completed. Positive relationships and vibes grow businesses. Since we now understand the client's requirements, we can now determine what gear we need to photograph the event. First thing we obviously require is a camera. I personally use a full frame camera, which has dual card slots. I don't believe you need a full frame camera. I believe you can capture beautiful images using a crop sensor as well. You just have to truly understand your camera and understand its capabilities and how to overcome its limitations. One feature I personally find important is having a camera which has dual card slots. The reason behind this is that as you are capturing, you are instantly getting a backup of your footage. So if the SD card fails, it's okay because it's all captured on the other SD card. I find this particularly important for shooting once in a lifetime events. Moving on. Another piece of equipment you're obviously going to need is a lens. Otherwise, how else are you going to capture these images while well, you're just going to use a camera body? So you'll definitely need a lens. I personally use a 24-70 f2.8 lens. I find the 24-70 to just be a super versatile lens for those run and gun situations such as shooting an event where you can go wide to capture establishing shots or group photos and then you can easily go to the beginning of a telephoto so that you can take nice portraits and also close up details. Another equipment requirement that I would say is really crucial, especially when shooting at night, is a flash or also known as a speed light. I personally use on-camera flash for an event because it just makes it easy for the run and gun situations. You can also bring along modifiers for your speed light, but this is completely optional. I particularly find beneficial bringing along the MagSphere by MagMod as it's very helpful in those run and gun situations when shooting an event. You can also bring along gels to attach to your flash so that you can match the ambient light in the room by changing the flash colour of your speed light. Another very, very, very important requirement is to bring spare batteries fully charged for both your camera and your flash. The last thing you would want is to miss out on a particular moment because the battery has died on either your camera or your flash. So make sure you do it. One final piece of equipment that you need to bring along is a bunch of spare memory cards. Just in case your memory card runs out, you can just quickly swap it out, put one back in and away you go. Start capturing again. Now having this equipment is all well and good, but there is still some pre-preparation required. 
For example, you'll need to make sure that all your batteries are fully charged for both your camera and your flash. Freshly format all your memory cards within the camera itself to prevent file format errors. Finally, I would say to ensure that your camera's file format is set to RAW and also to record to dual card slots, if your camera is able to, obviously. The reason why I say shoot in RAW is that sometimes it can help you during the editing phase. The reason behind this is just say you have captured a particular moment and, the, and it's underexposed, you can actually recover the image and basically save the moment, save the image and act like nothing's happened. <laughs> Once all of this is done, pack away all your required items into your camera bag, ready to go. Using a checklist may be beneficial to ensure that no item is missing. Creating a shot list can be really helpful when preparing to shoot an event, not only to list the requirements that the client needs, but also to make your mind think creatively. Begin listing all the shots you require and then start listing all the shots that you want. This will help brainstorm ideas to help provide creative guidance. An important note to make is that to ensure that this shot list isn't treated as a bible. The reason I say this is that spontaneous things happen at an event and if you're able to capture them, you will impress your client. Remember, under promise and over deliver. Your personal aim is to have return clients and by impressing these clients, you will be able to grow your clientele for the future. Knowing and understanding the shoot location can help when packing your camera bag to choose the right equipment, but also when developing your shot list. It can be really helpful. If possible, try to go to the event location a week before the event, at the time that the event would occur. This can give an understanding of areas of interest at that particular location, but also to understand the lighting situation. Although, once again, don't take this information as the Bible. The reason behind this is that the lighting situation may actually be different on that day, so you have to be able to adapt to this particular situation. For example, we have all experienced days where we experience all four seasons in one particular day. Therefore, lighting isn't a fixed parameter, so you will have to adapt to the changing situation on the day. One suggestion I would provide is to rock up to the event location early on the day. This will then allow you to calmly set up your equipment, scout the location before the event starts, so you can work out areas of interest which might be helpful when shooting particular portraits and also it will give you an understanding of the lighting situation. Hopefully it doesn't change too much within that period of time but if it does you will have to adapt. There's no choice. Rocking up to the event location early may also provide you a chance to capture the establishing shots and detail shots of the setup before people arrive. This will allow you to then solely focus on the event that is about to unfold. Following these steps can help you be prepared to photograph an event. An important aspect to note is to just simply enjoy it. Your positive energy will brush off on everyone and you will be able to capture moments you wouldn't expect. Remember, photography isn't just a product, but a service as well. Hope these tips were helpful. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. If you would like to continue this conversation, please comment below on this video. I would be glad to have a conversation with you all and also provide feedback if you like. I would just like to say thank you to all the viewers for taking time out of your day to watch this video. Thanks for watching.